Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. I've talked about it a little bit before, but the specific material you use for 3D printing outdoor tools, equipment, and gear has major impacts on how it functions, especially in an outdoors environment. You have to think about how it'll handle being out in different situations like underwater, in freezing cold temperatures, or exposed to the UV from the sun, for example. And that's why it's important to make sure you pick the right plastic for the job. Do you want maximum durability? Do you want something that's good for the environment? Do you want something with a lot of flex? Or do you want something with really good impact resistance? And that's why today I wanted to take a look at the six most popular 3D printing materials and take a look at their strengths and weaknesses for outdoors use. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and let's take a look. So first up, we've got PLA. It's the most common, cheapest, and easy to work with out of all the 3D printing materials. It's also environmentally friendly because not only is it renewable, it's made from corn, it's also biodegradable. It's a pretty firm plastic with not a lot of flex, and it's pretty strong. The downside is that it's pretty brittle and can chip or break relatively easily. And on top of that, because it's biodegradable, it gets absolutely wrecked by nature, especially with heat and exposure to UV from the sun. PLA would be a good choice for small tools and parts that won't experience a lot of impact or exposure to the elements or a lot of heat. A good example would be my 3D printed whistle on my keychain for emergency signaling or the Swiss Army style SD card holder that's in my filming bag. Next up we got ABS, which is the second most common 3D printing material. It's relatively inexpensive like PLA, but stronger and meant for real world use. Although it's a pain to work with as it needs a heated print bed and an enclosed print area, it's also toxic and definitely not good for the environment. Although it's relatively firm like PLA, it has a bit more flex, reducing the ease of which it breaks under shear stress, it has really good impact and wear resistance, is significantly lighter than PLA, and can handle higher temperatures before it starts deforming. ABS is a really good choice for load-bearing tools that need to be fined throughout the year in uses where it doesn't directly interact with nature, as nasty stuff can leach out into water or into the ground. Some really great examples of this are my modular sling bow that I designed, the paracord tensioners that I use on my tarp ridgeline, and carabiners like the one on my backpack that I use for bear hangs. After that we've got PETG, this is an interesting one. It's got this weird blend of characteristics. It doesn't need a heated print chamber like ABS. It does blob and ooze, which can be really annoying to try and dial in. It's technically non-toxic, although it's not biodegradable like PLA is. PETG has more flex than most of the other options on this list, although when it's pushed past its point of no return, it tends to shatter. It's a soft plastic, so it wears down easily on the surface, and it's technically food safe as it's non-toxic, but be careful as it can be contaminated from other plastics in your printer and lead from passing through your print head. It is water resistant though. It's a really good choice for things that need a bit more flex than ABS or will primarily be used with water. My Catadyne filter adapter is a great example of this, as is my Powerade solar still dongle, and another good use would be fishing tackle. Next up on the list is nylon. For any tools that you need to beat the absolute crap out of, this is the go-to material, but it is a pain in the ass to work with. Take ABS, but crank the temps up higher and print slower. It's also more expensive and needs to be kept away from moisture. Like ABS, it's also not that great for the environment. Functionality-wise though, it's amazing. It's tougher and more flexible than ABS, high impact resistance, and good wear resistance. It's even slightly lighter than ABS. Basically, choose nylon over ABS if you can get a handle on printing it. That is, unless it needs to be near water or humid environments because nylon is particularly weak to it. Nylon's amazing at anything that needs to be durable, reliable, put under load with a bit of flex, stuff like mounting adapters for Molly, hard magazine holders, or protective cases. Second last is TPU, also known as thermoplastic polyurethane. If flex is your game, TPU is your game. This stuff is basically like printable rubber. It's so flexible and soft. However, that makes it one of the most difficult materials to print with. The noodly filament loves to get jammed in the extruder. The phrase pushing wet rope comes to mind. For anything that needs a high degree of flex to it, you really can't beat TPU if you can get a handle on printing it. Even I can't seem to get it printing properly. It has good impact resistance, no crap, and it actually has some really good vibration dampening and shock absorption properties due to its rubber-like nature. TPU excels at protective use cases for protecting fragile equipment, stuff like phone cases and camera covers, and also for anything that needs to reduce vibrations like replacement wheels and replacement motor mounts. Its flex also makes it good for wearables that need to flex with your body. 
And last up, we've got ASA, my favorite material for outdoors use because this is its actual intended purpose. It's very similar to ABS property-wise, other than being much more toughened up to outdoors exposure at the cost of, well, cost. It's a bit more expensive. Mainly over ABS, it has a lot stronger resistance to UV exposure, making it great for any long-term outdoor applications or gear that you want to last a while when exposed to the elements. It's also noticeably lighter. In fact, it seems to be the lightest material on the six on this list, making it a great choice for backpacking gear where every ounce counts. I use ASA for my tent pegs that I'm actively testing out. Look forward to these being used on three upcoming trips. And it'll also be good for stuff like outside mounts for gear or signposts and other persistent gear that's placed outside. So obviously I didn't include every material under the sun on this list, but these six are the ones that I find I use most often and have a good mix of use cases. Like any tool, it's all about picking the right material for the job. Part of what I do on this channel is find new and interesting ways to create and use 3D printed gear for outdoors use. I have a whole playlist of other 3D printing related videos in the context of camping and backpacking use, so check out the links in the description. If you're new to the channel, I combine fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences, so check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next video.